So you got a whole bunch of these lateral connections um, between in layers two and three. Um, just the, just observations. That seems to be what we have. Um, the idea is maybe that's sort of what's helping form these associations. Um, all and then all of the inputs from the thalamus seem to sort of come into this layer four. Um, Layer five has a whole bunch of these outputs that are going out to cortex and down to the subcortex and down to the, to the brainstem. Um, uh, and then we have layer six that seems to go back to the uh, outputs back to the thalamus. So there's this really regular structure. Um, what's going on there? How are all of these wildly different things being done by the same sorts of structure? And there's lots of interesting debate about that right now. Lots of different possibilities. Um, um, really hard to know what's going on there. Okay, so uh, cortex. Um, tons of weird things going on there. We get some sort of sensory information coming into different areas, and Locally around those sort of primary sensory areas, we're getting some sort of hierarchy of, okay, here's my data coming in. Let's find patterns in that data and find patterns in those patterns and find patterns in those patterns. And as it gets higher level and more abstract, we start also bringing information from other brain areas. And that's where we're starting to get into these association areas. Um, and then we're combining those information in different ways and we're going to direct that information down to the subcortical areas and down to the brainstem. Um, each of those senses, like at the primary area, we have this nice topographical organization. I mentioned it for the sensory and the motor systems. Um, I didn't mention, but also in the vision system. Um, yes, it is that at the primary part of the vision system, hey, the neurons that respond to one part of the visual field are right next to the neurons that respond to the next part of the visual field. Um, so it's a nice sort of layering there that makes sense. Um, but then as you get into more abstract areas, that topographical organization um, doesn't really exist. Because um, again, things are very, very abstract, so it's hard to know what a topographical organization would even be. Um, and then we've also got this fact that across the whole cortex, this, the cells are organized into these nice five or six layers um, by cell type and connectivity, and that seems to be incredibly consistent across these systems. All right, so that is all interesting stuff to have in mind as we try to understand this whole giant thing of the brain and kind of how we're even going to do computational neuroscience. Um, the readings, um, basically everything I just talked about is straight out of Candle et al. Chapters 15 and 18. Um, the, um, again, to tie it back to eventual projects in this course, um, it's going to be things like, um, hey, take one of these, take a, a simple theory about one of these particular systems and build a little circuit that, that could maybe do that by hand. So like the simple reflex circuit that I talked about. Um, or um, uh, the simple version of the cerebellum, or the central pattern generators are also um, something. That there's there's some pretty good simple models out there that you can go just go and implement. Um, uh, I think there's also some pretty good models where you can that you can take and start where for things like okay, let's try to um, do a sort of a really simple learning association of how how would you have the amygdala learn its fear response uh, to a particular stimulus, um, or the basal ganglia learn to sort of choose which action to do in what situation. Um, the, the fact that there's this sensory processing hierarchy um, that goes on maps really nicely into what we'll talk about later in convolutional neural networks about how you do um, image processing, um, but you can also do the same sort of processing for other sorts of senses. So it might be interesting to sort of apply those techniques to hearing or touch or smell. Um, uh, other wild projects ideas would be things like uh, build it, take a simple neuron model of something that we we do in the course later on and then sort of say, okay, well, what happens if we add in something that normally isn't added, like hormonal modulation? You know, so, um, how does that affect the neuron behavior? So again, it's there's sorts of simple ideas of take something that, that currently exists um, and um, modify it in, in some way um, uh, that's based on some of these ideas from biology of, hey, there are similarities between these different brain areas. Let's take advantage of them. Great, thank you very much, and uh, we will continue next class.
uh, is when we'll get into, all right, this is all this biology, let's go get something a little bit more concrete, and we will go and focus on how do you even get started building computational models of this thing. Um, and we'll start right at the very beginning uh, with perceptrons. I'll see you later. Bye.